Hey, my name is Father Taylor Sanford. I'm a priest over at Immaculate Conception in Denham Springs. And you may be asking, what is a priest? Or maybe you already know the answer. If you already know the answer, then you can kind of snooze. But uh, for all of you who are curious, oh, what is a priest? I never really thought about that before. Here's a little diagram to show you. All right, so 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ lived, he died, he rose again from the dead, and before he ascended into heaven, he breathed on his apostles. These are these uh, 12 little guys right here, the little triangles with a ball on top. He breathed on them, and he said, Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. And so these, these apostles that were with Jesus and walking with Jesus his whole time when he was on earth were given the, the power and the authority of Jesus Christ to continue his work in time and space throughout history. And so these are uh, the 12 men who started the church, right? Given the commission by Jesus Christ. The problem was that they didn't live forever. And so they themselves had to hand on that same authority that Jesus gave them to other men who would do the same thing. And so they laid hands on them and gave them the power through the Holy Spirit. So this happened for, this is a, this, this marker was starting to give out over here. So we'll use a blue marker. This happened for 2,000 years, right? 2,000 years. This is, okay, this is another real, uh, not so good of a marker. 2,000 years later, to get to Bishop Duca. This is Bishop Duca right here. And so he is a successor of those apostles who have been given the authority to govern, to teach, and to sanctify in the church that Jesus founded. Okay, so Bishop Duca, he can't do it all on his own either. And so he ordains priests and deacons to assist him in that apostolic ministry. And so in May of last year, or whenever you're watching this, I don't know, it was in 2021, he laid hands on me. This is me over here. This is his hand. Sorry, Bishop Duca, your hands are kind of a little messed up in this picture. He laid hands on me, and he laid hands on another buddy of mine, and another buddy of mine, and he ordained us priests. And so we share in the apostolic ministry that Bishop Duca has, and we help him to carry that out. And the, the three functions, again, are to govern, to teach, and to sanctify. And that especially takes place in the Mass. So... That's, uh, that's the priesthood, okay? So we are called by God to do this. So nobody was born with the collar on. Um, you know, as, as cool as that would be, you know, I had to discover my vocation uh, through prayer and by just following Jesus, I came to the conclusion that like, okay, maybe, maybe God's calling me to be his priest. And so what I had to do is I had to go to uh, another priest and say, hey, um, I, this is what I'm feeling. What do you think? And so the church had to then like kind of verify the call. And I walked in this path of formation for six years before they ordained me a priest. And so um, you go through a special school called seminary, uh, which is a, a great place to, in order to discern whether the Lord is calling you to this or not. All right. So that's priesthood. Now to religious life. Wow. So what is religious life? Aren't you religious? No, I'm not. I am religious, but I'm not a religious. So religious life is a special vocation in the church where men and women feel called by the Lord to dedicate themselves more totally to him by becoming a religious sister or, or a religious brother. So what does it mean to be a religious sister or a religious brother? Well, again, it starts with Jesus Christ, right? All of, our, uh, all of our ways of life in the church start with Jesus Christ. And so this is, uh, this is the call of the Lord to perfection. And so it's not, uh, it's not that nobody is called uh, to perfection but monks and nuns. This is true of everybody. We all have a call to the perfect uh, degree of love and holiness, each one of us, to the highest union with Jesus Christ. But there are particular people 
who feel called to dedicate themselves in a more radical way in order to live out that call to holiness. And so these are monks, these, this guy right here, and nuns. She has a super, super long veil. Um, you'll never see a nun with a veil this big, but uh, I, don't, I don't know, I just thought it, it looked funny. Um, in any case, monks and nuns take uh, what's called vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And so these vows um, are means to which they can dedicate themselves more fully to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ once uh, looked at a young man and he said, go sell all you have and give to the poor and you will have something really great. You will <laughs> and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And so this is, this is the, the promise of our Lord to those who have given everything that they have. They have gone out of obedience. They have sold all they had uh, by means of poverty. And they have given everything, chastity, totally pouring themselves out for love of Jesus Christ and love of their brothers and sisters in the church. And so what's the point of a religious? The point of a religious is the same point that every other Christian is called to is to be holy, to be totally dedicated to Jesus Christ. They have been called to do so in a more visible and radical way, and so they give a great witness for all of us who have not taken those vows to realize that we're called to the same holiness that they are, and we're called to that same heavenly calling to, to finally be at last at home with Jesus Christ in heaven forever. They've chosen to do that while they're still on earth, which is a, an incredible gift. So if the Lord is calling you to a religious life, Answer that call. Don't be afraid. The Lord is never going to be outdone in generosity. And so this is what it means to be a religious. To be poor, to be chaste, and to be humbly and obedient in order to follow Jesus Christ more perfectly in this life so that he, might, so that he or she might be perfectly happy with him forever in heaven.